Today we are going to give you guys an update on what is happening at the farm, so let's talk about it. All right, welcome back to Hartway Farms. Uh, we're gonna give you a quick update on what's going on here at the farm. Uh, we've got some things going on in the middle of February and we are getting kind of ready for spring. It's hard, I was just talking this morning, I was talking to Texas Mom over at the Texas Boys Channel and we were just touching base like we do every so often and we, she was saying, um, I think last night, it was 70 degrees oh, in their house. Um, because of the weather outside and not because of the heat running like it is 70 in our house when the heat's running sometimes. Um, but I was, we were touching base and I told her, I was like, man, I can't even wrap my mind around spring yeah. yet because um, you guys can't see. But behind us, we're looking out our window or you know, behind you guys, we're looking out our window here and uh, there's snow on the ground. There's, yeah. there's uh, a the ground winter there's, storm yeah. coming tonight, um, freezing rain. It's no big deal. We're ready for all these things, but my mind has not quite moved to full on spring spring prep. yet. Yeah. Where my friend, Texas mom, is on there saying it's here. It's time in uh, in Texas. It's time. They're a couple of weeks late even to like getting seeds in the ground. Well, I don't. It's crazy. I don't know about that. I don't know. Yeah. I was telling her. I actually, it's like a whole different world. Like if you don't, wherever you live is where you become accustomed to. And I've we've right. only ever done gardening here. Even when we lived in Arizona for a year, for a few years, years back, yeah, we didn't do garden gardening there. there. Yeah. So anyway, so we're just hopping on here, you guys, and giving you an update on what's going on. Um, we've had some questions. We'll do a, a more specific Q and A video coming up. So if make sure below if you guys have any comments uh, or questions that you want answered um, for a future video, make sure you leave it down there. We read those and we will jot those down and put them on the list to cover at a later date. But today is just a quick update. So first let's talk about puppies. Right, we had 13 livestock guardian dog puppies here at the farm and we were able to find good homes for every one of them. Uh, we were able to bless a farm out in New York with one of them and the other ones found families and farms and hopefully good lifestyles for the future here. Yeah, it's... Um, <laughs> you never know. <laughs> you know, I've had people ask us if we will continue to do that. I don't, I don't think any of us want to be full-time dog breeders. That's no. not the goal of the dogs. Um, really the purpose of the dogs, you know, out in, as I'm looking out on our pasture here. Or the is it a pond? Yeah, right now it's a pond, but it yeah. will be ice <laughs> later tonight. But um, spring is coming. Uh, but the point of the puppies and our adult dogs, we have, you know, our both of our adult livestock guardian dogs are Great Pyrenees Anatolian Shepherd mixes mm -hmm. and have been an excellent addition to our farm. Um, I would not trade them for anything. They make a whole lot of noise at night, but they do their job. Yeah. And we haven't They've lost sheep to critters. We haven't uh, lost lambs to critters or chickens or whatever. Everything has been, um, They've been their job. so much yeah. better since yeah. we invested in those dogs and have trained them up. And with these 13 puppies, um, it was such a fun, fun experience um but it's again it's not something i want to do full time it was, all it was the time. fun to have puppies and then like be able to give them to their to new -home homes them. <laughs> but we would bring them in and socialize them and play with them right. and make sure they were used to people and weren't just wild yeah. um, so that when they did go to their new homes that it went really well yeah. and so far so much good feedback people tag us um, on social media or yeah. text or whatever and update us and it's been fun to watch the process but i don't want to do it I'd say two or three times at the most here. And I that's, just, I want to make sure, I think, yeah. I don't know how you guys are, but like I overthink it a little bit, really wanting to make sure that these dogs go to good, responsible homeowners. Yeah. Um, not that accidents can't happen, totally understand that. We live on a farm, we understand all of those things. Right. But I never want to put an animal in that position. We always want to be responsible animal caretakers. Right. And so that always comes into my mind. But overall, the process went so well. Yeah. Um, we had 13 puppies born, all of them were healthy. Mm -hmm. No issues with that. They all went to very good homes in a proper timeline. And, well, by eight weeks. We didn't we get had stuck with any puppies. Exactly, <laughs> by eight weeks we had like them all accounted for. Yeah, and by eight yeah. weeks, you guys, they were like 20 pounds plus. They were so they cute were, and yeah. huge and. They were healthy. 
healthy, <laughs> yeah, strong, strong. But it was fun. We got dogs. to meet. We got to meet some a couple other homesteaders that they were yeah. taking them to. Um, some small farms, large farms. Yeah, Indiana, um, with, uh, Michigan, Wisconsin. Wisconsin. Michigan. You guys, yeah. hi, everyone yeah. who took puppies. Yeah, uh, there's a puppy named Sadie running around out there now. So love seeing her update. Yeah. Um, so it's it's been overall a very good experience this first time. I know that's not guaranteed with future experiences, but yeah. it went really well. And we were uh, able. I mean, the reality of it is, is you you don't want to do things for free because it costs right. you money then. Yeah. So we were able to recoup a little bit of the of the investment into right. our original two dogs, and um, to carry the cost of those dogs because we we don't feed them garbage, so right. it costs money to take care of them and to improve on fencing for them. Yep. And I'll, I, actually, let's talk about just really quick what we need to solve come spring with dogs and fencing and the creek. Yes. All of you guys who have water, water. this was one trial that we had, and we can cover this more. We'll just do it later on another video yeah. like on things we want to improve on in the future. Right. But real quick. This is something to consider. This is know. something to consider with your livestock dogs. We have um, two creeks right. and a spring on our property. So we have water, and water, uh, actually, I don't think every year that creek has frozen. All the way through, Not but all the this way year through. it did. There's, and, it's, and it stays open in spots, but yes, well, it's it, open it, underneath. it became a runway to get across there very easily. So what do we need to attack, attack or tackle this spring for the dogs not getting loose right so we we've talked about this before and some other stuff but we're going to fence in the seven acres of pasture and put that into um, kind of a standalone paddock um, that will be broke down into smaller sections with the rotational grazing system and all that stuff but the long story short is we're not gonna we, we were giving them f kind of access to the whole property that's hot wired and fenced in but we've realized that they do cross water more readily than like our sheep and stuff like that. The our sheep, sheep don't go sheep in the don't water. don't like crossing water. So Even, they go across the bridge or something like that, but they won't go across like low water. They don't like it. They don't like going across the yeah. water. And strangely enough, our horses and our they haven't our cattle, yeah. uh, dairy cows and also steer, our steer have not Right, but with that with being water. said, they'll cross we, it to go over to the other paddock, but they won't wander in the creek. I don't know, right. that could happen. Right. But we, and we do have the hot wire going across the creek that would stop a larger animal from going up and down, like It would stop the, the horses, yes. probably not. Yes, I mean, sure. if they, they'd have to duck under. And so maybe and when, when they, yeah, yeah, when, um, maybe when Phoebe, the horse that was born here when she was younger, it would have been an issue or the steer when he was younger. But right. now we do have those taller fencing. But the reason we have to keep those hot wires tall is because it's a moving, functioning creek. And sometimes a tree, you know, a down right. tree floats down the creek or whatever. And so we, we don't want to be repairing fencing all the time either. So right. anyway, something well, to consider. To tackle, yeah. yeah, something to tackle this spring. Okay, moving on, let's get an update on cuttings. You, you did a video if you haven't seen that video go check it out again referring to the texasboys.com uh, if you are interested in kind of adding elderberries mulberries figs any of these yeah. things to your property they they have cuttings for very affordable on there and you go <clears throat> look on their website yep. go ahead and update us on our cuttings so we have our cuttings in a bin and they're starting to establish some of the little baby roots coming out of them. Um, and then our intention is to plant those into the property this year because, and down the road we'll talk about this, but one of the things I wish that we would have done a lot more aggressively a lot sooner, five years ago, is put some more of our longstanding trees and shrubs and the things that are um, the perennials that would be producing for us um, onto the property. This is the year. Yeah, so we're, we're starting <laughs> this that. This year is the year. We've got some figs, mulberries, and some of them will be used. The mulberries can be, you know, we can consume them ourselves, yeah. but they're also just for the, the um, wildlife on the property, um, wind breaks and all that stuff. So there's a lot of different uses for the, the trees and the bushes. Um, and then there's also elderberries too. So right. elderberries, mulberries, and figs. Yeah. So. Those big, are all big fans of all of those. I'm yeah. excited to see how they do. They look great right now. They're coming um, along. Yeah. Josh is babying them. And I have a lot of kids who like to take care of them too, because we keep them. It's not fun having, you know, one more thing in your dining room or your living room or whatever, right. but sometimes out of sight, out of mind. So we, I don't want that to happen with these. Right. So they're in my dining room right behind us. 
back here on the ground in that bin. Don't want them to die. Right. And so we want to take care of them. That's an investment for our land, and we want to make sure we take care of it. But so for far, sure. so good. All the things that you have done, yeah. you're happy with the process of it? So far, yeah. Okay. I, it's, it's, a, it's kind of a first for us to do it from the cutting stage. Yeah. Um, but once again, Texas Dad and the... The whole Texas Boys website over there—they have a lot of information on the roots, and the rooting, and the cutting, and all that stuff. With those, right? Things. You've done it before in the past, like lilacs and stuff like that. Correct. But yep. we haven't done it. And the it blueberries, recently. we've done it with some smaller yes. ones too. So. Yeah. Um, in that same uh, vein of things, we have been asked if we are, and we kind of touched on this earlier. Yeah. How are we starting seeds inside? Yeah. Are we doing anything in the high tunnel right now? What's what what's happening? Um, with those things right now and nothing. the answer is nothing <laughs> um, and I'm okay with that uh, I asked Julianne and I talked about this right. um, Julianne's my oldest daughter if you don't if you're new to the channel welcome and uh, hit that subscribe button but Julianne <laughs> is my oldest daughter and she really is in charge of all things garden right. with assistance when she asks us for help we help but right. um, she has a plan and I uh, previous years we have always done seed starts but I think for most things this year that we are putting in the garden she wants to direct seed uh, there's going to be yeah, we'll a few things uh, longer growing cycle things mm -hmm. that she wants to start in the house but otherwise I think she wants to direct seed currently our chickens are still in the high tunnel. I don't know, when do you think we're gonna move them out? This is our first year doing this. So. Yeah. And the reason we did that, just to touch on it real quick, is that we have a lot of wood chips that we have in the high tunnel area. And it so it's really- Like a few feet. Yeah, of, feet of it. Of wood so, shavings. So um, that needed a large amount of nitrogen or chicken manure that would go on there. And so we chose, because of the way the season is right now, is just to throw the chickens in there get them scratching in there, get the manure in there, and then we'll incorporate that into the soil. And hopefully we have phenomenal growing soil. And they're killing all those weeds and stuff too yes. for me, turning yeah. that over. We've already yeah. shared in one of our previous videos when Julianne and I sat down and talked about what the plan was for seeds this year and planting different things. Right. And we talked about the challenge of weeds that kind of took over our lives last year out of nowhere, which we've never had. So it, that will be a whole now. other task that we'll tackle right. this year too. So which I'm excited about. I was also just talking to Texas Mom about that this morning. So right. we we're we're coming up with a with a game plan here. Um, so really, the the to wrap that up, there's we don't have any seeds started yet. No. The soil is being actively prepared as we for speak us. for us. Yeah. Uh, by virtue of the chickens, and they will be moved out um, in preparation for that as soon as the weather breaks and it's not a pond out there. Yeah. Right um, now, all the snow's melting. Um, the last and it's few days, snow more, so, and it's yeah. it's turning into a bit of a pond. Yep. Um, thankfully, we used to have that issue exactly where we put the high tunnel. Right. And if you guys haven't seen, we have the whole process of the high tunnel from start to finish, and we can link that video here, videos here. Um, but in that exact section, we dealt with flooding. Right. And there's slight standing water over there, but nothing like what it, we had. It, we had yeah. a literally a pond there yeah. one year, and we said, how can we fix this? And we fixed it with mulch right. and soil and amending the soil and keep and building it back up. And right. it has worked. So if you have a problem area, we can maybe touch on that more in the future, but just continue to add stuff to the soil and that will soak up that right. water. Increase the organic matter and right. it will cause it to have percolate better into right. the ground. So keep following along and you guys will see what we decide to start in the house. You'll see how we direct seed into the ground. Um, I know that it will be our focus to do high density planting this year as yep. opposed to spreading out so much we want to kind of hone it in and really be excellent with small spaces and reclaim back the the weed territory yep. that kind of took over last year okay more to come with gardening you guys it will be our lives very soon it will just be in everything that we do i'll be fitting in school with the kids in the morning and then all of us will be going out um probably on almost a daily basis Enjoying to the outdoor yeah i'm really yes. i'm ready for sunshine Who's ready for sunshine? <laughs> okay. Lambing season. One thing we look forward to every yeah. winter, even though it's ridiculous that they like to give birth in the winter, but we like to keep our um, our our females and our male together because right. it's just for na now. natural yep. for them. We may not do that forever, but so far, and when we do that, they lamb in 
January, January February. January, February, March. Yeah. So how's lambing season going? Uh, so the report from William was is that we have about 15 of them alive out back right now, which is good because we had a rough start at the beginning we of did. the year. It was very um, cold. It was brutally cold, and they we had a couple of moms, I think, that were newer even um, that just weren't tending to the babies as well, um, which happens with the first time around usually. Um, so we did notice some of that. So we lost, I think we lost around six, if I'm doing the, yeah. the, num the numbers we right. We had to put down, this was tough and really hard, but we had yeah. to put down one of our original moms, original yep. ewes, and yep. she she had, she had was going downhill and going downhill quickly. Yeah. And um, in hindsight, she ended up having a dead lamb inside of her, yeah. causing trouble and not which is birthing something that you lamb. wouldn't know about until you wouldn't know too late. until yeah. it was too late yeah. and she because she seemed okay and then suddenly not okay right. so anyway there was nothing really to be done we tried to help her first anyway yeah. long story short she was also older yeah, she we've was had her for a long time we've ones. had her from the beginning and she was mature even before that so right. anyway it was sad she was super friendly brownie um you guys have seen me talk about her yeah. on the video here and uh, we had to put her down so Will and Josh took care of that. So these things come up. They're they're sad things on the farm mm -hmm. that happen, um, and especially when you're when it's a friendly one or right. one that is super uh, easy to deal with, easy to call, easy to manage. It's always harder when it's one of those. Right. So we had to put her down. That was a tough thing this year. And then it is normal to have some loss with lambs. Uh, I know that it. It shouldn't get easier, but it is kind of normal, especially in cold weather climates. Right. We might try to tweak that. Uh, well, and in that the comes future. to how, like, you know, we, we have them out back, they have shelter, um, but we don't keep them in like a lambing barn. Yeah. Um, some people increase their, their statistical odds by keeping them in like a heated barn and all that stuff. Um, but just it's just not where we're at right now. Right. It's we are, we are more homesteader based versus like full on production farming. Right. Um, and so when you do things kind of uh, the the high the hybrid between production farming and homesteading that's something that you have to weigh in there so right. it's going to happen so yeah a little bit of loss is going to happen yeah. so it's it's not fun but it is part of the deal right. and you understand that it's part of the deal so but overall so far so good with right. the lambing season something i don't have a lot to do with but that you take care of is the root cellar update how are things holding up in the recently modified storage increase root cellar i really <laughs> appreciate my root cellar um you guys have seen us uh go down there in many other videos whether cooking you know from mm -hmm. your root cellar or uh, organizing it or adding to it or whatever and i feel like it's working out really really well i'm really happy with it um a question i i received about the root cellar is where are the dry goods in there um, and I don't keep them in there. So that's the quick answer to that question. Um, we have a couple different rooms down in our basement. We live in a hundred year old uh, farmhouse right. and I'm super thankful for a, our, a giant semi clean basement, right. which we use for tons of storage. We use for a family closet down there. Yeah. It is un it's, it's unfinished. Saves us. Yeah. It's unfinished, but we're able to keep it tidy. Right. Um, so that has saved us in this house because when we bought this house, we bought it because of the land, not necessarily because of the size of the house or that kind of right. that kind of thing. So we uh, take advantage of every square inch of that basement. Right. Um, and so we have the root cellar room, which is where I put all of my canned goods. I even have like my pasta, which are in the cans, like those kind of dry goods, but right. and anything that's sealed up. But any rice, oats, flour, um, pasta that's in like a box, anything that has a box with it. Yeah. Um, what else? Spices. Just I'm like thinking your, on the fly. Like your stuff Any is of kind that of kind of stuff. Storage, yeah. Yeah. Any of like our uh, cleaning products and different things like that, I put in what we call the shower room, which you might hear me say it. And the only reason I call it the shower room is because there's a little muck shower, like a muck sink shower yeah. in there. Old farm shower. An old shower for you know whatever. Yeah. And. Um, uh, that's why I call it the shower room. <laughs> it's really just another storage room. I should come up with another name, but right. I store all of those things, which in, in this shower room, which is very dry. Right. Um, our root cellar has lots of moisture and that's cool. That's fine for the root cellar. Uh, right. but the shower room is like an, an interior 
wall room right. kind of kind right of, yeah it's, it's just on a drier portion of the basement it stays yeah. uh warmer right than the root cellar does right. the root cellar stays more like ground well, the, temperature the root cellar is on the large body of it is underneath our front porch right as and it's well. three sides of it the the old the earth, foundation or the earth, earth. yeah right yeah. um with the block around it the right. concrete around it so anyway so i store them in two separate spots that's mm -hmm. why you never see any of my um dry goods uh because someone was asking about where's where do you keep your flour right. and where do you keep that and uh we go through a process with our dry goods and we can cover this more again in another video because we're just touching on things but um if i get a bag of flour a bag of oats a bag of rice any of those other things we throw them in a chest freezer for like right. a week um, to kill off anything that would reproduce in there and then we bring it back to room temperature sitting in the basement or whatever completely right. back to room temperature then we put them in either bins airtight bins or we put them in five gallon buckets right. we lid them and we date them right. uh, so that we can create a proper rotation so that's how we manage our right. our stuff but the truth is you guys a first stocking like bulk uh, purchase video uh, was when we were in Michigan mm -hmm. And we took a trip to Country Life Natural Foods, right. and I bought a lot of flour, a lot of oats, and a lot of sugar. Now, I don't remember what time of year it is. Levi, our editor here, if you want to, do you remember when we did that video? You can put up however long ago that was. I thought that would last us a long time. Yeah, no. Well, it doesn't. Yeah, no. <laughs> we have a lot of people in our house, and we cook at home a lot. We bake right. at home a lot, which is good. That's why you stock up, is to use stuff at home and to not waste uh, all of that beautiful stuff that you stacked up yeah. on. And I think that touches on, there's a, other questions about rotation and all that stuff, which like I said, we can get into that later. That but could the, be a whole video the itself. The big thing is, is that when you have a larger family, you're, you're rotating through your stuff kind of by proxy or naturally, right? Yeah. Whereas if it's just maybe two people in a house. You might have to pay more attention they, to it. They would, yeah, you'd have to like maybe have a log of that and like rotate those things through. But we, just the practicality of what we deal with, we don't have to have too much of an inventory system because it just gets we used. We go through it. Yeah. Um, when I did, if you haven't seen our Aldi stock up video, yeah. we'll link that here and you can see how much butter and how much ketchup I bought. You guys, that it's is gone. all gone. <laughs> so, and again, I don't think it's because of frivolous usage. I, it's because we use it. We bake at home and we cook at home right. a lot. Right. I We like eating at home. We like eating together. Mm -hmm. We like knowing where our food came from and what's in it and all of that. And so we go through this stuff. So, I mean, I got, I got, I always get comments about hoarding when uh, we do a video, not from my faithful people who watch us all the time, but usually right. from, from people that don't know us. And uh, I just laugh a little bit on the inside. I'm like, I, I, it doesn't matter. <laughs> it gets used. It's, it's it, gets used. it does not get wasted. Yeah, these things right. get used and they get used kind of quickly in the grand scheme of things. So right. anyway, that's how we work our system. It's pretty, mm -hmm. there's, you know, we can show you more of that in the future. I don't usually take you guys down to the shower room because it's really dark in there and uh, it's bad lighting. Right. <laughs> it's hard, it'll be hard to see, but, and it's a small space that we take advantage of it. Right. So. All right, anything else for no, today? No, just what Andy was talking about earlier is we would love to hear your feedback as far as uh, the things that you've gotten out of the videos. If you have questions that you want answered, uh, we're looking together to put together a video on that. So we would like to be able to answer your questions specifically, and yeah. we do read through and go through that content. We do. We've already been collecting questions because you guys are faithful to comment and right. to let us know what you're thinking and what's on your mind, what's on your heart. And that's the whole point of these videos, to keep you guys connected and to keep you updated with our family and what's going on the farm. Um, I know upcoming too, we're going to just talk about looking back over the last five years yeah. on uh, what have, what things have worked and what things have not worked, successes and failures, and it's good to evaluate those things. And so we're gonna share that with you guys. Um, so yeah, just make sure you guys hit that subscribe button. Uh, we love that you're a part of our Heartway Farms family and we appreciate you and we'll see you on the next video. Bye.